Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. 2009 Nissan Murano. Customer drove it from New Jersey like four hours away. He says the center stack, the, uh, the all the buttons for the audio and the climate control are just dead in the water. 160,000 miles, he said he got the car for free from a relative or something. He already had to replace the transmission and now he doesn't have heat or music so you know like what can you do um, he said he already tried a new panel with all the buttons that didn't work he tried a new or an eBay whatever used AV unit which is like the master control unit for the audio video uh, system that didn't work he's like I give up what's the problem we already saw one of these, uh, if you remember, um, might have been a year or two ago, where it had a similar problem. The dealer diagnosed it, like, hey, you need a new, it's called a multifunction switch. That's the panel with all the buttons. They put one on, it worked for a little while, then it crapped out again. Then they said, hey, you need this master control unit for thousands and thousands of dollars, like $7,000, I think. And they brought it over. I'm like, hey, your new multifunction switch, brand new from the dealer, doesn't work. Replace it again. And they did, and the car, I think, is still okay. So let's dive into this thing and see, you know, place your bets now. Is it going to be a bad multifunction switch button board? I don't know. We'll see. So for uh, diagnostics like this, you want to have a good battery maintainer. We're set at 13 and a half volts, just to keep the battery topped up while the key is on and we're doing all kinds of testing. So the customer already disassembled some of the dash parts. Uh, I unplugged the, you know, this whole control stack. It looks like it should be a radio, but it's not. It's just a board with another board attached to it and it's just had it just has one 16 pin plug that attaches to the car now the only interesting code in the AV unit is this U1300 AV COM circuit that's pretty much the same code we had on the other Murano um, so right off the bat saved a couple steps already here's the connector It has 16 pins, but only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wires. And we care about obviously power and ground. Recheck those with a test light and accessory. The power turns on as expected. Um, and then these communication wires. So let, let's take a look at the diagram. It, this is the AVCOM high and the AV com low circuit so it's not the main can you know 6 and 14 this is a separate network where all the audio video HVACs or uh, just the AV stuff um, talk so let's take a look at that diagram all right let's take a quick look at the diagram so this is called the multifunction switch this whole thing is the multifunction switch kind of an interesting name for it and you can see communication lines talk to the AV control unit. Now, which model is this? It has the Bose stereo. Make sure you're looking at the correct diagrams. So you can see over there, Bose stereo. It has a seven inch display. It ha does not have navigation. Um, it has Bluetooth mp3 six disc cd changer so no dvd this is kind of like the middle middle of the road model so uh, the air conditioning diagram you can see the multifunction switch talks to the AV control unit so whatever you push on here cold hot AC fan speed that gets translated from the AV control unit then to the main can and then that goes to Right here, AC auto amplifier on the can. 
as in pin 6 and 14. But we're not worried about that. We're worried about this AV comm circuit. And what is on the AV comm circuit? So definitely the multifunction switch, definitely the AV control unit, which is this big box right here, which is also the CD player, I guess. And then if we go to Bose Audio without navigation and without DVD entertainment system, let's see what modules are on this AV comm tree. So right here, multifunction switch, pins six and eight. Come down, go to our AV control unit, and then split off. If it has an iPod adapter, it would go there. If it has a camera control unit for the rear view camera, it would go to there. Okay, so one, two, three, four things on this network. And I determined that it does not have an iPod adapter which would live in the center console. This is, again, not the fanciest model. So, nothing to see there. So on our notebook, so four possibilities, AV control, multifunction switch, iPod adapter, and camera. Now, let's plug in the scope and see what is going on on these two lines. So since this doesn't work, I just unplugged it and the scope, two channels, are plugged into the AV comm high and low, and then the ground is on the ground pin, which is known good. So blue is high, red is low. Let's take a look at the scope. All right, so what do we see? So key is off. Our blue channel, that's the high line, AV comm high, is at 3.5 volts. The red line is at 1.5 volts. Just steady, just stuck there. What do we expect to see on a CAN signal? We expect to see 2.5 volt bias, the high goes up to 3.5, the low goes down to 1.5. These are basically stuck at the rails all the, all the time. You can you know, hit the ignition switch, Turn the vehicle on, you see here the DVD, whatever, CD changer. It's stuck, 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 stuck. And we only have four modules on this tree. We do not have the iPod adapter, that's just not applicable. Um, the multifunction switch, I unplugged. The AV control unit, I found the right connector, I also tried unplugging it. This stayed at the rails. So I'll demonstrate that. So this thing has like 10 connectors back here, but this is the one with the comm wires. Let me unplug that. You can see it changed just a little bit but it's still stuck at, now it's at 3.8 and this is at 1.1. So according to the wiring diagram, the only other remaining module that could have these can lines stuck at a, you know, plus or minus one volt from the bias has to be this camera control unit. So that's as far as I got right now. Let's see if we can find this camera control unit and either disable power to it or just unplug it. All right, so this camera control unit that we saw in our wiring diagram apparently lives the right rear corner of the vehicle behind the trim if you go to removal and replacement, removal and installation, without navigation, it just says remove luggage side finish right hand side, remove camera control unit screws, disconnect the unit. So if we can get to it, we should be able to unplug it. Now here it is on the wiring diagram. 
you can see the uh, comm lines go to go to that and also there are some other comm lines just dedicated from AV control unit to the camera control unit I assume that's because this thing makes an image from the rear view camera which is right here and there's a lot of data passing to the AV control unit then passes to the front display okay so there's front display unit so let's try to find this camera control unit do a visual on it and we'll look at the scope so live scope rolling while we unplug the stupid thing all right took a few minutes to peel back this trim you got to take this plastic off screw there this uh, silly seat release thing so not too bad and I see the magic box right here this is, has to be our camera control unit now the connectors on the bottom I was looking at it with a mirror and I see a little green crusty action right on that corner pin that must be the constant battery feed it's a purple kind of hard to see in the mirror focus on here Here we go so there's the, some green crusties there it's right next to a black so anyways I'm gonna try to unplug this thing without removing it even though I guess we could remove these Torx bolts while watching the scope so I'm gonna focus you guys in on the scope while I un unplug this thing alright so we got the scope in the trunk there's the two signal lines so let's try to unplug this module I don't know if I can get it with just my hands Press down on the wiring harness with a claw, and oh, we got it! Sweet, there's the money shot. Both lines are not zero, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to leave this unplugged and plug in everything else. Hopefully, our climate control and our radio comes back. I don't see too much green on the pins, but there is some green on those wires. So let's just leave that unplugged for now. Plug all this stuff up front back in. Well, here's the module. I got the screws out of it. Let's let's see what's inside. So it was in there like this. You can see this corner got some rust color coloration on it and yep right there we got some green crusties some some crap I don't know if it easily pops out Milwaukee to the rescue how much green crusties do we see yeah, just a little bit right there. Right there, the caps that might be leaking out. So, yeah, this module is shot. You can see destruction right there. So, the owner wants it fixed. I mean, it looks like there might have been a little water intrusion here at some point, might be a little damp. This thing's all exposed. It's not sealed against the elements, so not too surprising. There's the part number. By the way, there's definitely water intrusion going on. There's a pool of water right there. So, a little swimming pool going on. No wonder that module got exposed to moisture and went bad. Alright, back in the front, front seat here. 
we're at zero volts. I didn't plug in the multifunction switch yet. Let's see if we have any activity when we turn the key on. Oh yeah, just beautiful AV comm signals. Key on, key off, it goes to sleep right away. Let's plug in the multifunction switch. I hope everything else will work. All right, moment of truth. Oh yeah. There's our display, there's our blower, there's our temperature, there's our AC button, rear defrost, I didn't recirc. I don't even know what this is. You're the latest from Kevin Sweet. Tuner works. Everything's great. That's it. So no parts required, we just eliminated the parasitic parts. I think the guy can live without a rear view camera, or he can find a module on eBay, plug it in himself, take care of the water intrusion. Um, you know, <laughs> first, first world problems if your rear view camera doesn't work. So what do we learn? Um, basically, on these modern cars where everything is tied together, a little water intrusion in the right rear corner will disable your audio and your climate control and your rear view camera and everything else, making it really a pain in the butt. Systems are all interrelated. If that network goes down, potentially you're going to be literally dead in the water. At least it didn't stall the car or like uh, we saw on, the, on that Mercedes. Remember when the rear washer fluid was leaking and shorting out one of like the bumper radar sensors and it basically disabled the whole vehicle yeah similar but at least this one still drove here so that's it thanks a lot for watching in this case the scope and OE wiring diagrams were absolutely necessary can't do this diagnosis without that you just get a code communication code what do you do then parts can didn't work he tried the AV and the multifunction switch there's one more module on the network, which you wouldn't know is on the network if you didn't have those wiring diagrams. So thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. So a little bonus footage on the Nissan Murano. I talked to the customer. He said, go ahead and fix everything. He wants the water leaks diagnosed and sealed up. He wants a new module installed for the rear backup camera and the connector cleaned up. So we're gonna, you know, finish up the repair. And for water leaks, uh, my favorite strategy is to go just Google it: Nissan Murano, you know, trunk water leak. And sure enough, apparently this is a common problem. This is a really handy video here: Nissan Murano rear water leak. Fix 09 to 14, and by I'll give some credit to Miami FYR. So, what he found was um, goes into this seam weld here that dries out, I'm assuming, um, and creates a leak. Which is, in, which is interesting is that. It's actually on both sides, so it's right. definitely a big problem with Murano's of this year. I guess this is the 2009 to the 2014 models. Um, just be aware of it. I'm sure it's going to be occurring on uh, a multitude of vehicles. Uh, but a real simple fix would be ultimately to just put a little bit of silicone or some type of sealant in there. I'm going to show you a product that I just bought at uh, AutoZone. This is a flow that, of silicone. That is um, good stuff use. right there. So that's exactly what we're going to do on this Murano. So let's do a quick visual inspection on these seams. So you can see the sealant, the original body sealer is cracking. And right here there's a low spot. And water does not need much room to go right into those cracks. So on this side, for sure, 
you can actually see there's a little stain mark right there is leaking from the top also from you peel back the headliner just a little bit you'll be able to see that little plug yep there's that water mark coming down there and on this side where the uh, automatic tailgate is that's, that's actually also full of water <laughs> and we have the exact same story on this side so see the water is leaking right through this cracked seam right into here so I'm gonna clean this all up we're gonna spread that silicone over fix up the water leaks dry that corner out clean the connector up and I ordered a replacement module on eBay it's about 100 maybe a little over 100 bucks they're available you want to find one just look at the pictures make sure it, has, sure it has no rust on it because some of the modules suffer the same fate as this one so you don't want to buy a module that's already pre-rusted so we want this sealer to adhere to the metal really well so I'm going to wipe this with a damp cloth all the way you know, where the crack is and then just blow it out with press there, make sure everything's dry. Do the same on the other side. We got our flowable silicone windshield and glass sealant ready to go. So these silicone containers, once you open them, <laughs> the silicone starts to harden. So just cut off a corner here and spread a bead along the seam and it actually flows right into the cracks it's it's much more flowable than stuff you can get in you know one of those big contractor whatever packs from the hardware store so we'll let that cure do the same on this side Way down to the weather strip. And also up here. Water can cause a lot of damage on the interior of a vehicle over time, for sure. That looks pretty good. All right, courtesy of eBay, we have a used rear view camera module. I don't see a speck of rust on it, so that must be from a dry vehicle to replace the corroded one. So. Let's uh, get in here, plug it in, make sure the rear view camera works, button everything up, then this car will be done. Alright, camera mo module is plugged in, let's close the trunk, put it in reverse, see if the reverse camera actually works. Okay, here we go. Push the fancy button. Make sure the camera is nice and clean. Oh yeah, there we go. Sweet. That's it, this car's done. So, what do we learn? The customer almost got it with the parts cannon. He replaced two of the three modules in the network, and it was the third module that was bringing down the network. The one that was getting soaked in the trunk. <laughs> well, that's the way it goes, so I think it got off pretty easy. Cheap to find on eBay, better than replacing this whole mess like we did on the other Murano so luckily this still this still works um, so that's it thanks a lot for watching 
We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.